Welcome to the Y. Most of us don't think of space much during our everyday lives, but more than a thousand miles above our heads, some 4,500 active satellites zoom by, providing all sorts of things for the technology we use every day. The problem is, it's getting crowded up there, from used rockets to debris from old satellites, even massive solar panels. And all of it is orbiting the planet at 17,000 miles per hour. Science reporter and meteorologist Jeff Fox explains why it won't be easy to clean up this mess. At this moment, thousands of satellites are circling the Earth in well-controlled orbits. But they're not alone. In fact, they're greatly outnumbered by orbiting debris. Nobody's driving those pieces of debris. They're bolts, they're nuts, they're scraps of metal, they're pieces of satellites. Those are the dominant things in space. This is something Ed Liu has thought about with two trips to the shuttle and another to the International Space Station. We knew that the, the number one risk to dying uh, per NASA's own, own uh, estimations uh, for a space station astronaut is being hit by orbital debris. It was then, it is today. And it's not like we just started thinking about this today. A NASA engineer looked at orbiting space junk back in the late 70s. His findings were dubbed the Kessler syndrome. I was really actually shocked at how quickly things could start coming apart. One collision creates more debris, which creates more collisions. If you saw the movie Gravity, it was all about Don Kessler's calculations. This is all governed by the laws of physics, but to make it simple, if an object is going fast enough, even something very tiny can make an impactful collision, can cause destruction. And in space, there are at least 34,000 objects as large as this jar. The average collision at the International Space Station altitude, about 25,000 miles per hour. And it has the effect of just about breaking up anything into a catastrophic explosion due to the energy of that collision. What can we do? It's possible we might be able to get rid of the hundred or so uncontrolled large pieces of orbital trash. This is one proposal from the European Space Agency. But the real problem is with the smaller pieces. All we can do there is track them and try and get out of the way. That's where LEO Labs comes in. With skyward pointing radars scattered around the world, their business is to track and warn satellite operators. Under routine conditions, they evaluate hundreds of millions of potential collisions a month, and some are more concerning than others. 10, 15 of those per day. That's generally the range at which a satellite operator would move their satellite. Add to this mix the wild card of space warfare. Here's the debris field from when the Russians recently blew up one of their own satellites. And they're not the first. Decades ago, the U.S. did it too. It was such a big mess that generated so much debris that the United States said, we won't do that again. Now, if we could just convince the others. Science reporter and meteorologist Jeff Fox joins us now. Jeff, thank you so much for coming on The Y tonight. So you interviewed Donald Kessler. Help us understand the Kessler syndrome. As space junk hits other space junk, the problem just multiplies. Why is that alarming? Well, uh, obviously, things around the Earth are moving very quickly. 17,500 miles an hour is about the low Earth orbit speed. But things are not moving in parallel. They're moving in all sorts of intertwining and intersecting orbits. So even a tiny piece that hits at a very fast speed can cause a great deal of problem because the whole calculation for energy is mass, which in these little tiny pieces of space junk may be very small, times speed, which in the case of the space junk is immense. So the force is great even from a tiny piece. Could the Kessler effect mean we would be trapped here on Earth then? Yeah, oh yeah, sure. So what the Kessler syndrome says is you get one explosion or, or one uh, collision 
and it sets off space junk throughout that orbital plane. But now, instead of having a little bit of space junk, you have these hundreds or thousands of pieces, and they set off more chain reactions. So the simple answer to the question is, yeah, we could set up literally a barrier at a certain area in orbit that nothing could be or very difficult to launch anything through. So this is the major concern of the Kessler syndrome. And by the way, it's more for little tiny stuff than from the big junk. We can track the big junk fine. We can move out of the way. It's the little tiny things, things, well, if you take things that are just marble-sized or smaller, or excuse me, marble-sized or larger, we're talking about at least a half million objects in Earth orbit. So on several occasions, astronauts on the International Space Station have had to huddle in an emergency escape pod because of the risk of an impact. How close do these pieces actually come? Well, uh, the... Uh, NASA and the Russians, who run the ISS together, uh, we're very, very cautious. So if the uh, the chance is one in 10,000 that there's going to be a collision, they will move the International Space Station. If it's one in 100,000, they'll move it, but only if it won't affect any of the current experiments or operations. But even without moving... When the space shuttle was up, it had a number of windows that had to be replaced after flights because they had been hit by debris. And here's the scary part. The debris that hurt these windows was just paint flecks, little pieces of paint that had peeled off something. But that's enough at orbital speed to do damage. Wow. That's incredible. How how bad is the problem getting? Like, how much more space junk is collected up there? Well, we're trying to be better now than we once were. Uh, in the beginning of the space program, nobody really thought about low Earth orbit as a place that uh, would have much commercial use. I mean, we could only launch one satellite at a time. Anything in low Earth orbit couldn't stay up very long because of its proximity to Earth. So we really didn't think about it all that much. Now we're talking about uh, Elon Musk and SpaceX wanting to put up 20, 30,000 satellites. Uh, the company that uh, that is affiliated with Amazon wants to put up over 10,000 satellites. And this is just in the United States. There are other international companies that want to get involved as well. So this is not debris as much as it's planned, but it's going to be like the Long Island Expressway on Friday at 5 o'clock with a snowstorm coming. It's going to be awful crowded, and there's not going to be much place to move. Before 1957, there were no man-made objects in space. Now there's 4,500. How did that happen over time? <laughs> well, we weren't careful. We never thought about the implications. I mean, there are still pieces of rocket that are up from the 1960s, still orbiting the Earth, and by the way, uncontrolled. But these large pieces, this really isn't the problem. And it took me a while to get my head wrapped around this as well. All the large pieces are very well tracked, not only by Leo Labs, who I mentioned in that package, but also by the military. It's the little tiny pieces, these pieces, marble-sized and smaller, that can take out a satellite, that can injure the space station, that can create a Kessler syndrome scenario. There are just too many of them, and we can't track them all. A lot of them are just too small. You mentioned that some countries deliberately avoid destroying satellites to reduce the amount of space junk. Are there rules or international treaties that cover this? Well, there is an international treaty, but it came about in 1966, I believe. So early on in the program, and really, if you look at it, it only really addresses the problems that we expected if people decided to militarize space. And what the treaties do is it makes it illegal to put atomic weapons in space, to put weapons of mass destruction in space. But what it doesn't talk about is cleaning up on your mess. You know, all the signs that we have in national parks 
telling you that it's okay to take pictures, but don't leave anything else in the national mm -hmm. park. We should have that surrounding the earth as well. We have been terrible stewards, not only the United States, but everyone else who's launched things into orbit. Okay, Jeff Fox, a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for your time. You're welcome.